I always encourage a spiritual practice, okay? So before I jump into telling you about how I practice Buddhism, I want you to understand whatever you practice, whatever you believe in, I am here for it. I love you for it. Just lean into whatever it is that you believe. But I wanted to share a little bit of my story. I was writing about it a lot in my second book coming out. And I was like, oh, let me just give you a little synopsis. You're not going to learn everything about Buddhism in 10 minutes. Like, it's just not going to happen. But it did change and save me. And it continues to do so, right? So for me, a lot of you know, if you listen to the podcast, you've heard the episode, I forget what, it's in the 50s, I think, on religious trauma. I had a lot of religious trauma. You have to remember, I see dead people. I've seen dead people all my life. Now I do a lot of parties and shows and things with that side of it. That wasn't always the point. I mean, like on point, like that that was, you tried to hide from it. And so that was an enormous amount of trauma that came with the religion of Southern Baptist, which is how I was raised. Uh, again, if you practice that, I love you for it. Just, I'm just sharing my experience and it was very problematic for me. Okay. And just a little too rigid. I mean, uh, too, too, very strict, very, you know, and it just never really aligned with me. And if it doesn't align with you, then you're allowed to go outside of what everybody else wants you to do. And I told this story many times that uh, a psychiatrist that I went to in my God, early 20s uh, kind of had these books on his shelf, right? He was from the Philippines and had the book. He was great. He's the one who told me to be doing this as a profession, thought he was crazy. I was like, I can barely form sentences and you're telling, okay, cool. Um, but he had these books. He never pushed it on me. I said, oh, what is that? And, you know, I was able to start looking at it. And Buddhism is nothing that you just jump into. Yes, there's peace there's disconnection from attachment, there's connection, beautiful place. A, it's a daily practice, daily. But you gotta understand the origin. So you don't just jump into this part, but I wanna tell you the four noble truths, which is like the principle of Buddhism anyway, is so you have the suffering, okay? And there's there's uh, names, but I'm just giving it to you in like English terms. So you have suffering. It's the acceptance of suffering is part of, being the is in the human race. It's part of it. You're never going to just hit things out of the park. You're never just going to avoid things. It's going to happen. Okay. That's acceptance of that. And acceptance goes a whole other thing. Radical acceptance is a whole, you know, that I preach a lot about radical acceptance because it again, saved my life. So I'm always very passionate about it. And there's a lot of facts behind that and science behind that too, but also a lot of experience behind it. And so that's the first one. So the second one is the origin. What is the origin of your suffering? Well, a lot of times it's attachment. Oh, I wanted it to be different. Oh, that hurt. I lost this person. Yes, I understand that because when my mom died right before my 14th birthday and had been sick all my life, I understand what the origin is. Mom's not there, right? But now here's the thing. There's an attachment that you have to the suffering. Again, we're not going to go through all this in 10 minutes, but I'm very passionate about it and I've done a lot of research in it and, and practice it every day. And what you you get attached to the idea of trying to understand it what did this person um mean to you why why you got to understand this why and that's an attachment right so when you understand the origin you can be like oh whoa i get that there's an attachment here so that's going to go into radical acceptance which kind of it's not it's like it's part of the four noble truths but it's not written in the four noble truths right and then you have cessation so what cessation is to stop right is to acknowledge the origin and acknowledge that the suffering will stop. Not might, will. I promise you it will when you let go of the attachment, which is why attachment can be so problematic, right? So that's the cessation of it. Now it's a process, right? You're not just going to, I think I'm going to do this. Okay, I get it. You're not going to do that. The fourth one is the path. Understanding that when you follow the eightfold path, which is a whole different topic, eightfolds, um, but an eightfold path you are actually following the path that is going to lead you away from that suffering. But that's life. That's a four noble truth that you have to know. There's so much more to it. And a lot of people say, well, how do I get into it? First of all, you do not ever, ever get into it to feel better, to find that spiritual center. You better research it. So I like more of a Tibetan Buddhism, but there, there's a couple different kinds. I, I like all of the Buddhist practice and I still learn and learn and learn. You always learn and you start to understand the travels of the Buddha. Um, it's not real religion. 
So for me, that was important. I didn't want to be affiliated with religion. Uh, I do a little bit of paganism as well because I talk to dead people. I hug trees, you know, do all that stuff. And so I think that's a big thing for me is the understanding and the acceptance. So you do a lot of sitting in silence, um, not distracting yourself, but understanding the why you're doing it, but knowing the origin. Why? What is Buddhism? Right. Some of the boring stuff that isn't always fun. And everybody wants that. Well, if I meditate, I'm going to feel better. Yeah, but that's not you don't meditate to feel better. You don't do any of this to feel better. None of it. You don't go to the gym to feel better. You don't eat healthier to feel better. You do it because it is good for you. It is soul providing. And the feeling good is the byproduct. Right. Because then you're always going to chase that. So in my personal experience, you know, it's because there's a process. You just, just go, don't go, okay, I'm Buddhist today. Like, no, no, no. You got to really understand the origin. You got to be willing to put in the effort to do the boring, mundane work and not just the fluff that's over here. It's not all fluff. It's not fluff at all. But the things that you think of, the the mantras, the meditations, that's why the five journals are important, seriously, because it helps keep you focused, the staying present. Like, all those things are important and they're all a huge foundation of Buddhism and it will all help you. I mean, it saved my life. Like in many ways, God saved my life. Um, the, and you can be a, you can be a Christian and still practice Buddhism. Yeah, you can. So I, I, I believe in God personally. It's just my thing. Um, and that's fine if you don't. Uh, okay. Uh, but I, I practice heavily into the spiritual realm and the, I do my crystals. I have... I'm a little woo-woo. I'm a lot of woo-woo, right? And so that happens when you've talked to dead people all your life and you were made to feel like a pariah. You were made to feel like an evil devil. You were, oh my God, like the list is endless. And so it took a lot of deprogramming over a period of time and a lot of personal work. Therapy is great. Coaching is great. Medication is great. But you have to do the work. And on this practice, on any spiritual practice that you have, it should be your special private practice. It's fine if you want to go into a collective. Like, I get the concept of church. I get the concept of fellowship. Yes, like-minded people. It's great. I love it. But don't let the practice of somebody else sway how you practice, right? So if you're like, well, I don't want to go to church, but I believe in God. Well, you can have your own relationship with God, right? And so I don't, I think people get really caught up and then you're too worried about what your family did and if you're raised Catholic, but you don't like to be Catholic, that's fine. You don't have to be. But when you get solid with the spiritual foundation, your life does become a lot more clear. I, I won't say easier. Easier, yeah, but I, I don't want to use that word. Clear. And you will not be attached. Again, spiritual uh, foundation number three, right? Cessitation. In order to stop the overthink, no, some of it is chemical. That's why you need the medication. That's why you need the coaching. I'm not saying this is like the miracle cure, okay? But I'm telling you that so you can understand that this is the mindset switch here. So in cessitation, in, number, in the third noble truth, what cessitation does is acknowledge the fact that when you let go of the attachment, the attachment is also based in ego. You're at, you know I have the ego death series here on YouTube. It's based in ego, all right. So if you want me to go deeper into the podcast on it, we're not going to go so deep where I'm teaching you everything about Buddhism. You're not going to do that in one podcast either. But if you would like me to go deeper onto the podcast, even with my experience, or just let me know how you want me to go deeper. I would love to give that to you. I, I love my practice. It is also a very personal practice to me, uh, but I'm very proud of it. And it's really helped me heal some past trauma in general, religious trauma and everything that comes with it. So Namaste, baby. Namaste. The light in me sees the light in you.